Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine's been really awesome, but also at the same time, it's been so damn crazy. As most of you already know, yesterday, Halo of Thoughts, he dropped this huge bomb on me. So what Halo of Thoughts did, he created an article and exposed how I get my leaks. So today, I'm going to be talking all about this article, why Halo of Thoughts made it, what led up to it, why does he hate me so much, what is his problem? problem. Also, I will be talking about how I get my leaks. Was he correct, guys? I'm sure all of you want to know, how has King Michael been able to be such a solid leak boy during the offseason? And guess what, guys? So after this article was dropped by Halo of Thoughts, a GM, an owner of an Overwatch League team, called me out as well. Philadelphia Fusion's Tucker blasted me on Twitter saying that he knows how I get my leaks. So we're going to cover that as well, guys. It was absolutely nuts. It's honestly been a real eventful offseason for me, and this only tops it off even more. You guys know me. It, everybody who has watched my career throughout me playing Overwatch as a pro, throughout me being a streamer, a content creator, and now a leak boy. I love drama. I literally live for this stuff. Like, why would people want to give me more content? If you truly hated me and you don't want to see me succeed, don't give me the content. <laughs> I don't know what these people are thinking. I feel like they also enjoy it. So, hey, screw it. Let's just create some drama, boys. Also, you guys won't even guess who defended me. Like, <laughs> you know you fucked up when this guy defends me. So, XQC went on Twitter and blasted Halo of Thoughts. We'll cover that tweet. Also, a whole bunch of other people within the community blasted him. And like I said, you know when XQC is defending Michael, you know you screwed up big time. But anyways, I'm done rambling on. If you guys are excited to learn about this whole story, all the drama, I'm going to talk about it in this video. So drop a like on it. And if you want to stay updated on all Overwatch and Overwatch League news, drama, esports, whatever it is, this is your channel. So click that red subscription box, do yourself a favor, turn post notifications on and never miss a video. All right, guys. So there's a lot of backstory leading up to what happened yesterday. So we're going to go through all of that. Now, I remember like two months ago at the end of August, when Halo of Thoughts started dropping leaks about Melbourne. I was covering it on my channel because it was a big topic at the time. We didn't know who all the Overwatch League cities were going to be going into Season 2, and he leaked that one was going to be Melbourne. I ran with it, and I said, hey, maybe we can trust this guy. I gave him some credibility on my channel. You guys know this. You watch the videos. I said... I believed him at the time. Well, he ended up being wrong. And ever since then, I kind of took his stuff with more of a grain of salt. And I didn't really cover it as much on my channel because, well, you guys knew how I was a slasher. I always believed anything he said because his credibility was really high. He, the guy was basically never wrong. There was no reason not to believe him. And I've always always talked about that. So once someone loses their credibility, I stop covering them. So after that, I say give it a week or so, then I start getting information from multiple sources, and I leak that a new Overwatch League city is going to be DC. After that, I realize I'm in a really unique position where I can get a lot of information from a lot of different sources within the Overwatch League, and I start searching for it. And now I'm dropping players joining teams left and right, big stories about DC, Runaway, whole bunch of stuff. And throughout all of this, for the most part, I was never proven wrong. Every single player signing of mine has been 100% legit, and when it comes to situations like DC, Runaway, and then when it comes to situations with DC and Runaway, neither of those have been disproved either. And in those situations, they were only denied by the people who I wrote or made the video about. So as I said, I continue to leak stuff, Halo of Thoughts, he does his own thing, you know, he's posting a bunch of rumors, his own leaks, there's nothing really going on between us, I don't really acknowledge him that much, and that leads up to this, September 17th, Halo of Thoughts tweets this, Rumor, take this with a pinch of salt, but one of the more interesting rumors I've heard is that ex-selfless gaming DPS player Defran is looking at potentially returning to professional scene, be at the contenders level or possibly with Atlanta. And when I saw that tweet on Reddit, I was like, well... I have sources that Defran has been reaching out to Academy teams as well. He hasn't really committed to anything, but I do know he's reached out to them. So I tweeted this out. Sources, I do have confirmation Defran has been reaching out to multiple Academy teams. Don't take this with a pinch of salt because it's true. Defran has contacted multiple Academy teams with interest in playing. Now, I guess 
this could be seen from Halo as me taking a shot at him. And I understand that. Maybe I did start this whole beef thing with this tweet. My intention at the time was not to start beefing with him. My intention at the time with this tweet was to just say, hey guys, like this is legit. Don't take it with a pinch of salt. It's 100% DeFran has contacted multiple academy teams with interest in playing. And then after I dropped that leak on Twitter about DeFran joining Atlanta, of course, Halo of Thoughts, he sent me a DM and this is what he said. Is DeFran signed question mark? Because I would like credit for it, smug face. I responded and I said credit question mark lol and he said I had that an hour before you rumor or not and then again I said what are you talking about he responded saying the Defran rumor is the one I shared an hour before you considering you put don't take it a pinch with salt in the tweet credit for that is technically mine and then I said I was confirming a rumor you posted I don't see how that has anything to do with my recent leak about Defran joining Atlanta and he said because it's where the original information came from you confirming the signing confirms the original tweet of mine about him joining Atlanta rumor or not dude that's mine and at this point I was like listen dude you tweeted a rumor that he was potentially talking to some academy teams and maybe even Atlanta and you even said take it with a pinch of salt like are you actually trying to take credit for me leaking DeFran joining Atlanta 100% because you tweeted this out in my opinion does not mean that you deserve credit for me leaking that DeFran indeed 100% did sign with Atlanta this just shows him trying to slide in and get some free publicity you got your credit for dropping that rumor with a pinch of salt in it it was on reddit you got a whole bunch of publicity don't come and try to slide in and take my credit where i did a lot more work than you now i can see if he wants credit for the pinch of salt tweet that's understandable sure I quoted him in it, but for him to try to take credit for me leaking that DeFran is joining Atlanta 100%, that's ridiculous because, like, dude, you posted a rumor. At least say sources if you want credit, man. That's how I felt about it at the time. I even told him that other people were talking about DeFran joining Overwatch League Season 2 way before he tweeted that he was potentially rumoring with a pinch of salt talking to Academy teams and possibly Atlanta. So if we wanted to talk about getting credit, let's go ahead and find the very first person who who said that he might join Overwatch League Season 2, and let's give him credit. Like, the logic is flawed in my opinion. And because I told him all of this, he got real salty, and ever since that very moment, he was throwing random shade at me all over the place on Twitter, and to be honest, I ignored it for about a month and a half. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these tweets. We'll start off with this one. So there's a player, Jesse, he used to play for Element Mystic, he's now signed to Soul Dynasty. But about a month ago, Jesse received an offer to play with his teammates Pockpo and Daco over at Atlanta for a $120,000. He turned it down though because he wanted to play with a more Korean team and I leaked this. Jesse then came to my stream and he said it wasn't true, which is fine, you know, it's whatever. Jesse did eventually go join Seoul Dynasty, a more Korean team. He did turn down that offer from Atlanta. But at the time, Halo of Thoughts thought, oh hey, let's go ahead and tweet this out, kind of throwing shade at me, saying that it's not true because... Jesse went to my stream and denied it. So this was the first tweet. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Here's a tweet, which he did a lot of these, and I'm not going to go look for them all. He also made a ton of Reddit comments talking about how he deserves the credit. He's bashing his head into a wall over and over, trying to get people to realize that the original information came from me because I posted a rumor with a pinch of salt. Like, dude... Again, if you want credit for this shit, just put sources. Everybody knows you don't deserve credit for that. But this is where it starts to get worse. Let's go ahead and take a look at these next tweets. So after I was announced to be joining Phase 2 as their head coach, he tweeted this out. Whoa, Michael, you know being a Contenders Trials head coach and leaking Contenders players to Overwatch League is a massive conflict of interest, right? My response to this is, not really. I don't think leaking Contenders players going to the Overwatch League is a massive conflict of interest. Some people might, but hey... I'm a head coach and I also leak stuff. Get over it. There's no major advantages to being a head coach and leaking stuff. This tweet was really annoying to me because, you know, he's trying to interfere with my new career. I want to be a head coach and he continued to do so. And I was really annoyed, but I still bit my tongue after this next tweet. He tweeted this out, quite possibly going to be the best comment regarding Michael joining phase two, you'll see, laughing emoji. And the tweet down below says, shit leak boy, didn't even leak his own juice. Now sure, I get it, it's funny, I laughed at it, but you don't gotta tweet this out, maybe drop a like or a retweet on it, but you're clearly throwing shade here, and then this next tweet was the last straw with me. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So this was about the Boston Uprising situation, when I made a response to Benchmob's thread, and I said, I can confirm 
confirm that Mistake's flight was indeed paid for. The bench mob and Yiska report was pretty accurate, but there is even more to these stories. And hey, little thoughts, he wanted to throw this at me. Well, I'm very much neutral in the reported situation in Boston from Bench Mob and Yiska until I've read more into it. If you have reliable information, share it instead of making it more of a telenovela. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically a soap drama. And after I read that, I was done. I was tired of this guy throwing shade at me randomly. I'm gonna respond to him. There's no reason for me to listen to this guy's shit. He wants to start drama, let's do drama. And I said this, don't tell me how to share my information, bud. And like you, I hold on to my stuff till I know it's 100% accurate. Give it a try, you might improve your track record. And then honestly, we went back and forth, probably sent like 10, 15 tweets at each other. I will link it down below in the comments if you guys want to see everything that was said, but I'm going to go ahead and skip this part because the video is getting a little bit long. Now that we know all the background information, how our beef started, let's go ahead and take a look at this article that he dropped yesterday, basically exposing how I get my leaks. Report how Michael, Michael Padilla has been leaking Overwatch League roster moves. One of the Overwatch League's leak boys, Michael, who has a self-claimed 100% record in revealing roster leaks this offseason, has been using an official Overwatch League document in order to make these correct leaks. The document is a spreadsheet that is used by all the Overwatch League teams to update each other on player signings that have been made. Sources within the Overwatch League who have grown increasingly tired of Michael's lack of journalistic approach and etiquette have shared this list with myself to show Michael has been able to leak this information. The official sheet is designed to be shared between the teams only and provides each other with information as to how they've attempted to improve during the offseason by stating which players they have signed. Clearly stating if a player's contract has been approved by Blizzard, league sources have advised that this would have been passed to him by a team official and shouldn't have been shared to Michael or anyone else. Once this document was passed on to myself, it was the reason I personally stopped sharing any further the roster leaks. Overwatch League team started to notice that their roster moves were being leaked by Michael when he started to share the roster moves shortly after they had updated the official document. Michael has checked this sheet on a regular basis and this inside information has allowed Michael to constantly share the moves and claim they were provided to him by multiple sources, when the majority in fact came from this document. A prime example of this was when Defran was rumored to have been signed by either a contenders or the Atlanta Overwatch League team. Michael stated that woke up and checked with sources when in fact, he was able to check the document to see that it had been updated and then confirm the information as a source to leak. I mean, dude, this guy is clearly still so upset about this Defran situation. Listen, man, I am so sorry that you tweeted it out as a rumor and didn't confirm that he joined Atlanta before me. I apologize, dude. With this information, Michael has also been able to tease that more information is coming soon, allowing him to overhype roster leaks that had been shared by other leakers and claim they were his, but also the reason as to why he has not been able to share any information of teams who have been able to keep their information secret, such as the Vancouver franchise. Michael's approach to these leaks have not only drawn the ire of the previously mentioned team officials by not reaching out for comment before sharing this information, but also esports journalists and writers both within the Overwatch and outside of the eSport. While not claiming to be a journalist, Michael's YouTube-style announcements, which he's been monetizing on his page, has caused blowback effects to other journalists who have been attempting to contact Overwatch League teams for comments or work. During his time sharing the league's roster moves, he has caused a conflict of interest by taking a position as a head coach to Contenders Trials Team Phase 2. This has meant that Michael has potentially caused issues within teams who he will be coaching against by sharing which players have been signed by Overwatch League. This has potentially given Phase 2 an extra advantage as they qualified for Season 3 of Contenders North America, allowing them more time to focus and prepare on their season to come. While the information he shared about buyouts and extra information have come from sources close to Michael and and not from this document, he has been able to use this to his advantage and blindside league representatives with the knowledge that shouldn't have became public on such a regular basis. As the Overwatch League teams are now starting to announce their new rosters for the 2019 season, it will be interesting to see if Michael will continue to release the information the way he has, using the claim that he holds on to the information he's received till it's 100% confirmed and waiting on the form to be updated, or if he starts to respect the work of esports journalists who have put in hard work and effort to obtain information 
information in a more ethical manner. I can confirm that Michael wasn't asked to comment on this report. Okay, so as you guys can see, Halo of Thoughts, you know, he went on a wild little goose chase here. He thinks he has cracked the code as to how I get my leaks. And I know you guys are all wondering, how do I actually get my leaks? But what I can tell you right now is this is not how I get my leaks. I mean, if you go through this whole entire article and think about all of the stuff I leaked, it is very clear that I do have multiple sources that tell me a lot of information. I mean, look at the end of this article. He did recognize and say, oh, clearly he does have other sources because he wouldn't know stuff about buyouts, etc., etc." I mean, I can name so many things that I've leaked that wouldn't be on, I guess, this roster list update thing. So what he said in this article is that this roster list updates every time a player signs with a team or something. Well, then let's talk about some of the other stuff I've leaked then. Starting off at the very first, I leaked Washington DC being one of the new Overwatch League teams. It was one of the very first leaks that I dropped ever, and that was confirmed to be true. Then the second thing I leaked that wouldn't be on this list is that Jesse declined an offer with Atlanta for $120,000 to go join a team that was more Korean. Well, guess what? He went and joined Seoul Dynasty. Another thing we can talk about, which actually got brought up by Real Leak Boy yesterday, he tweeted this out. Some additional background on DC's pickup of Corey over Logix. Logix was their first choice, but negotiations fell through when he asked for a 130k salary, so they went with Corey, who was their second option. I don't know if you guys remember this, but 22 days ago on my stream when I leaked that Corey was going to join DC, I talked about this Logix situation basically word for word on what Real Leak Boy said. Let's roll the clip. Corey has 100% signed the contract and he will be joining DC. Now, some back information about this. They weren't originally going for Corey. Corey wasn't their target. They were trying to pick up Logix, formerly of the Florida Mayhem. But, fell through. Logix wanted a lot more money. And DC said, all right, we're gonna go for Corey instead. And they have signed Corey to their Overwatch League team. I can continue to go on and on about these leaks that would have nothing to do with the sheet that I was right on. Another one is Nako from the Boston Uprising. I leaked that he was going to be leaving their team. According to Halo of Thoughts, that's not what is put on this spreadsheet. They don't talk about players leaving teams, only newly players that are signed apparently. And then also, like, the best argument to this whole entire thing is, if I had this sheet, I would have literally leaked everything. I make money off of this, I make videos, I do streams. If I had this sheet, I would have just leaked every single trade, every single signing, everything that is on it. And there's a ton of different leaks that I missed out on during this offseason. One, Cookie going to the LA Valley. I had no idea that was going to happen. Another one, Hotba being traded over to Guangzhou. I had no idea that was going to happen either. There's also been three signings to the Florida Mayhem that I missed out on. There's a ton that I have missed on. To be honest, I kind of wish I had this sheet because then I could have leaked everything. I would have an even better track record with more leaks. I would be more credible, more proven. So it literally doesn't make sense for me to have this sheet. So I don't see how there is any proof in this article leading towards me using it. And matter of fact, everything I said is complete evidence against using it and it makes sense. And I tweeted this out and what's funny is a guy from Philadelphia Fusion, not even a guy, a GM of the Philadelphia Fusion, Tucker, responded to me denying these claims from Halo of Thoughts and he said, you used it to leak elk signing. Dates lined up exactly when he was added to the document. And I responded, or maybe somebody around your org has loose lips. Like, like just because you signed somebody, put him on the document, and I leaked it that same day, doesn't mean that that is proof. Does this guy not know how many leaks I've dropped this offseason? I can't even count them. I'm probably up near 70, 80, 100. I'm sure some of them are bound to line up on the day that they were put on this document. You probably signed them that day, and then I heard about it, and then you put it on the document. And again, I wish I had this document. Like, seriously, I could have leaked everything. I'd be goddamn the best leak boy. I would have took over Slasher. But unfortunately, I just don't have this sheet or document. So honestly, I don't know really what to say to Tucker. If he thinks I have this document, good for him. Who even cares if I have this document? Does it matter? And now that I think about it, there's so many people commenting on Reddit. Who cares if he has the document? Like, honestly, I, who would care? It doesn't matter. It's my source. It's not my source. That wouldn't matter where I get the information from. The fact is, I'm still credible and I've gotten everything right. So it straight up just wouldn't matter, right? I, I don't understand why this is such a big deal. Anyways, the Halo of Thoughts, the guy is just so damn salty that he got beat to the Defran thing. And let's go ahead and hop into XQC's response, which, you know, again, when he defends me, you know you messed up. So let's take a look at his tweet. That's a whole lot of words to express that you don't have the juice. 
Preach, XQC, preach. He's just clearly salty. And then he responds to XQC and he says this, LMAO, I had the juice. Why do you think he was repeating a lot of my leaks? Oh my God. Really, dude? Really? Repeating a lot of your leaks? I've probably repeated a few of them, honestly, because I don't check your leaks because you're unreliable. You've been wrong a lot. So I didn't bother to check them. I, I tweet out my own leaks from my own sources so people know that something is legit and is going to happen. I'm sorry that you're wrong a lot, buddy. I'm sorry that you're salty. I don't know what else to say in this video, guys. I think I've covered it. We're at the fucking 20 minute mark. There's been so much juice. It's gonna be a double upload today, guys. You can expect a video tonight because I have stuff to cover for actual Overwatch League stuff, more drama. So if you guys wanna stay tuned for all that, be sure, drop a like. If you wanna stay updated on all Overwatch League news, be sure, subscribe. Stay tuned, guys. I'm out of here. Peace.